Dennis, now you've written two books now involving Frank. The first was Battle for Las Vegas, which has been a runaway hit, very useful book for our mob tour. We do the Vegas mob tour and we've used your book to, to base our tour on that. But you did, I would imagine, hundreds of hours with Frank to get these stories, is that right? We spent a lot of time, yes. Uh, tell me a little bit of you know, Battle of Las Vegas, for Las Vegas. What, what actually was involved in, in the research part of that? Battle, what I, what I did, I wanted to tell the story of the Tony Spilatro era, uh, which is what the movie Casino was based on. That's right, the movie Casino is based on a true story. Right. And we should let people know that. Uh, Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci were playing characters, but they were actually based on the real characters of Tony Spilatro and Frank Rosenthal, correct? Right. Correct. And instead of whatever was the, whatever the hotel was called, it was basically the Stardust, right? Right. The okay, so go ahead years, and tell us what, what you did there. Well, I wanted to, uh, to write that story, and at the time, I, most of the uh, so-called bad guys, the, the gangsters, were, were gone, or I didn't know how to locate them. And um, I, I felt if I could get some fresh information that hadn't been covered in TV documentaries or uh, other books, I, I could come up with some fresh things the public hadn't heard before. So I started uh, looking for some of the former police officers and FBI agents who had actually handled the investigations. And that's how I met uh, Dennis Arnold. That's how you met Through Dennis. the research. Okay. And as I talked to a few guys, uh, it was a little difficult to start with because th these people didn't know who I was. Uh, and I'm coming out of the blue asking them, you know, about some very sensitive things they So they did. were a little standoffish, I they would imagine, They were a little standoffish, first, yeah. and it took a little time before I could prove myself that I wasn't a crackpot or, uh, and so forth. And then once uh, one of them accepted me, and pretty soon they would give me the name of someone else and make an introduction for me. And that led from one thing to, one to another. Thing. Yeah. How long did you actually spend researching the book? Uh, a little over, I would say, a little over a year in research, and then uh, the writing and getting published was probably an 18 month to closer to two years. So almost two, almost three years total when you yeah. look at it. Right? Yeah. So a lot of work goes into a book, especially Absolutely. something like this, because this isn't fiction. Right. This you have to have your story straight and you have to have your facts. Right. So, and so in, in doing so, uh, you, that led you to doing Colada. Yeah, when I uh, was researching for battle, uh, Dennis Arnoldy was kind enough at one point to put me in touch with Frank by telephone. So we had an initial uh, conversation at that point. After Battle was uh, completed and at the publishers, I kept in touch with Dennis on and off. And I got thinking uh, what a fascinating story uh, Frank's story would make, his life story. And I mentioned to Dennis, as if we were talking to Frank, to see if he's ever thought about it. Well, it turned out that he had thought about it. In fact, he'd done uh, a lot of documentation on his own to get his story uh, preserved. So uh, eventually we met uh, in person, talked over and we decided we could co-author the book. And uh, So we started the project and we're pretty well finished with it, waiting for the printer. So when is the book expected to be released? The anticipated or the target date is for May, this May. May of 2007. May of 2007. Okay, well good. We'll look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Now, Frank, back to you. Uh, you were in prison when you had heard that Tony finally became a made man and, or became part of the Chicago outfit, as they called it. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about what he did or how that happened or what you heard? Well, I heard that uh, him and Joe Lombardo got made at the same time. And being that Tony was, a re was living in Las Vegas, that Joe would be his boss in Chicago. Okay. So Tony would have to take orders from Joe Lombardo. Right. But they were each equal in rank, let's say, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's all I heard when I was doing time. A lot of people have discussions over the word you know, Tony the Ant. Could you do you know where or how that came about? Yeah, that's that's bullshit. There was a wiretap, and this guy Mike Bresnell, I don't know if he's dead or alive. He was part of a crew that Tony worked with, and he. When he talked to Tony on the phone, he'd say, hey, Ant, short for Anthony. Yeah, like Italian. So the guys FBI do picked that up the wiretap on it uh, and thought it was his nickname, the Ant. I see. And he's been labeled with it. Yeah. You know. 
growing up in Chicago myself, I had a cousin named Anthony, and they all called him Ant. Yeah, well, so I can see what You wouldn't call him Ant. He didn't like it, huh? Nobody would call him Ant. Oh, I see. Didn't we like didn't it. like nicknames. Yeah. Well, it seems like a lot of these guys get these nicknames. Who gives them these names? I mean, is they're, it their, their, their own friends, friends or yeah. something like that? Friends or cops. Yeah, I see. So do most of them hate these names, most of these guys? If they, if they receive it from the law. Yeah, okay. If they receive it from their friends, they could stop it. Then it's it. an enduring thing. So some well, it real. could be, but you yeah. could stop it. Right, I see. See, I had one too, but I stopped it. Okay, you cut it short. Yeah, I didn't want it. Yeah.